Hey, it's Vaughan at westcoatbellpottery.ca in Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, it is August 23rd and it's noticeably quieter today um, in the gallery, so I'm going to attempt uh, to throw three sinks, which I took an order for about two or three weeks ago, but I haven't been able to stop because I've been so busy. So when you do sinks, um, the clay needs to be a little softer for you if you have to send to 25 pounds at a time, which is what I'm doing. So I feel really lucky because the last order I got from Laguna, the red clay was what I would consider too soft for my regular work, uh, mugs and balls and things like that. Uh, but it's perfect for sinks. I lucked out. <laughs> I lucked in. <laughs> anyway, uh, 25 pounds of clay is a lot to center, so I have to maneuver around it a little bit to actually loosen it up to be able to put it on the wheel and center it. So the first thing I'm gonna do now, you'll watch, is I'm going to move it around. Not wedging, but just kind of banging it around into a ball to get the molecules jiggled about a bit. Um, and the little platelets that clay's made of. And, uh, and that will make it a bit easier to center. Okay, I have three big balls of clay ready. Um, so now I have to throw a sink. Um, the clay is soft enough, so I should be fine. Uh, I also have, which I've never used unless I absolutely have to, let me show you this, something that's called a strong arm that I can put onto the sink and actually make it easier to center. So let's see whether I have the ability to take without having to use that, because the 25 pounds is definitely yeah, towards the outer limits for me at my age. So. First thing you do, like anything when you're throwing, and I'm now going to turn off this bowl, the, the vocal and, and dub over it later, because this is my wheel that makes that loud humming noise. And I know some people hate that, so, uh, but I love this wheel. That's my comfort noise, because this wheel is was bought in 19, about 88, I think, somewhere around 1988. It's a Brent, it's a CXC. Uh, it was a really top of the line wheel. Uh, so what does that make it? 23 plus 12, 35 years old. So I'm very happy when I throw in this wheel because I made an investment back then, which was a lot, and it's still going. First thing is, I'm gonna bang this piece of clay down don't want to have that on the underside because I'll trap air in there. That'll make it hard to center. So on the other side, I'm just going to round off. So that I don't have... Okay, so the, the clay here um, is very smooth and round on this one side now. I've um, banged it around enough so there's no cracks visible, there's no little pockets where I can trap some air. So I'm carefully roll it over so that we make sure there's no air trapped underneath. Because when you're centering, you can really feel it if you have a little air bubble in there. It's, um, it may be a small one, but it really does seem to put you, put you off if you're trying to center this big lump of clay. I guess because the air pocket squeezes and moves around in the clay. All this prep banging just saves you a lot of time because it'll be fairly centered before you even start. And that little bit on the top there is a hollowed out bit there, so I'm just squeezing some clay into it so we don't end up having a little pocket of air right in the center there. And remember, I throw with my wheel next to a wall. I've set that studio up so each wheel has a little hard wall next to it and that way I can wedge my elbow in right in that little wall area. And at this point I think the wall is a little bit too close so you're going to see me stop the wheel and basically move the, the wheel away from the wall a little bit.
And this is where I actually could feel that my elbow was actually not able to really wedge in tight in that wall. So there you go, and move the wheel a little bit further out. And that way your elbow with your wrist bent back is just the perfect distance from the wall so you can apply the maximum amount of pressure using your elbow locked into the wall without too much of a risk of your wrist being bent backwards. I use my knuckle to run up the side wall here to feel for any little ripples because when you're centering such a big piece of clay you often will fold a little bit of clay over um, to the lower area a little bit and trap a little bit of air in there. <coughs> and if you do that you'll end up with potentially a crack in the wall of the pot because there might be a little extra water wrapped up in that fold. But I run my knuckle up there so that you can feel for any of those and just press them out if you find any. And it's important when you're actually opening up like this to try not to create a hollow double wall here. Because you can see the outer edge and the inner edge and a little gully in between. So it's quite easy for you to open this up and end up with like a double wall. So you can actually push one part down, which you'll see me do in a few seconds. See how that double wall is starting to create there? I'm leaving quite a thick bottom too because there's got to be a drain fitted in there so you want to make sure that it's at least two and a half to three centimeters thick at the bottom. Remember a plumber is going to come along with a wrench and tighten up a drain in there so you know make sure you've got enough clay so it's actually not fragile. I'm using my knuckles now. Fingertips are not strong enough so knuckles on the inside, knuckles on the outside. This is where that double wall starts to create, and now I'm going to squish it out. You want to make sure you don't trap a line of water in a fold of clay all the way around. So I wanted to make sure I could really round that off before I pull the wall up. Soft clay is fairly easy to throw if you're doing big pieces, but one of the problems you have with soft clay is structurally it's not strong enough to support what's above it. So you've got to be careful not to overhang too much. I use the sponge to put some water in between my fingers and the actual clay, not on the inside but on the outside there. It just helps to keep it evenly lubricated so you don't get stuck on a, on a part of the clay that's a little bit drier than the rest. And pre-pulling, you can often run a wet sponge all the way up from the bottom to the top before you do the wall pull, and that way you know it's evenly wet all the way up.
that double wall that was forming at the top is now being worked into the piece completely. You use a lot of water up when you're doing things like this. You can always scoop it out later, so don't be skimpish on the water that you're applying. Of course, when you start, you're throwing with the wheel going fairly fast, and it's gradually getting slower now as you actually open it up. And in a harder lump of clay, if I could have centered it, I'd be very tempted to really widen the actual sink at this point. But I know through experience that this softer clay is not going to be able to take it hanging out too far. Now I'm basically drying out the inside of the sink, soaking up all the water, making sure there's a smooth layer of water all the way from the bottom to the top so I can actually do my final shaping. So this will get rid of that little unevenness a little bit. And the final work will be with the ribs, just to drag the water off the surface and do the refining. And this is a wooden rib that I'm using at the moment. It was a little easier to hold in a metal rib. Now I'm using the rubber rib to try and really push in on the inside to get rid of any throwing rings. Because I will be decorating and painting the surface on the inside using paper stencils which you'll see later and uh, I want to make sure that there's no horizontal throwing rings going through those stenciled areas.
It helps to compress the clay a little bit too. And now with the softness of this clay, it is very hard to actually get this to support itself because I want that top flange to go out a little further. There's no way of knowing at this point except for just basic instinct that the clay can actually support being pushed out another time. So you just have to go for it. If you need to do it, you do it. And you can feel the clay as you're pulling up. If you feel like any give whatsoever, and it's just starting to sort of bend out and, and flop a little bit, you just have to stop. And you can take a blow torch. Some people use a gas torch. I actually have a heat gun, uh, which is used for paint stripping, that I use in the studio if I think something is going to start collapsing and it's worth saving. A piece this size is possible. You can actually correct something if it starts to go out of shape. But this one, I think, was just about right. So I knew when to stop. Now the center area, you have to make a hollow area where the drain's going to fit. And just clean up the edges. It's very important, obviously. It's a sink that your edge is nice and rounded. The final thing I have to do here is I, I push a little bit of the clay from about four or five centimeters from the center point I'll start pushing in towards the center point with my finger pushing down hard and I make a little hollow bowl shape within that foot area so that you can actually put a drain in and it will be recessed below the surface of the inside of the bowl so that way the drain won't hold any surface water when it drains. So you're just pushing down a little bit and it should be maybe about you know six to uh, ten centimeters across uh, depending on if you have a big drain or a smaller drain. And that's barely wobbling at the moment, so we refined it enough so we got rid of the most of that wobble. Okay, this is sink number three, um, and the other two went fine, um, and this basically was very soft clay, very fortunate for this project, um, and the only thing that I really had to be careful of is that if you hang out too far, 
the clay will collapse because stiffer clay can support a more weight above it and softer clay just can't. So I had to be very careful I didn't oh, and, and you know, put the rims out too far and I sometimes put splash rims on my pieces where it's very flat at the top. I couldn't do that in this case. It was I could have waited till the next day but it, I just beveled them out a little bit uh, and, uh, and they, they looked fine so I, I felt like it was a good set of three sinks and they have to dry now for about two full days before I can start the decoration um, which I think I will do in a follow-up video since uh, this one was getting a little bit longer the editing has cut it down a bit but I'll still show you cutting the paper stencils next okay the sinks are thrown have been drying out for an entire day now but they're still a little bit too soft to start decorating because when I start spraying or adding colors they need to be able to dry fairly quickly uh, it still takes an hour or two each layer to dry out but, um, but I'm just drawing my stencils which I will cut out tonight um, in preparation for maybe starting this uh, to decoration tomorrow so I just drew a little house here um, and then I'm using an X-Acto blade. So I've got a rubber mat underneath, it's a cutting mat. And I have cut this way for 35 years plus, so I layer my paper, I've got about, uh, I don't know, 15 sheets here on top of each other, so if I'm very careful and not tear the top sheet. I get 15 stencils each for each shape that I draw. You can't reuse the stencils because they get covered in clay and their paper. So if, you know, if somebody said wash them out, <laughs> you can't. They just dissolve in the water, and it's hard to wash anyway by the time you wash them I think you could have cut some new ones and by cutting each time by hand I keep it fresh so that every one I do is different windows and doors I do break the blades by putting this much pressure on, so I go through a lot of blades. But then, and not anymore, because I don't do these pieces very often. I have an order for three sinks, which is why I'm doing this. So basically, this is just a telephone book, but any paper would work. And then if I've cut through carefully, the whole house just comes out. And then the roof. This is just a little Dutch barn, basically. I use the shapes of the houses that are around here. I can see across the bay, generally, because I look out the window and I can see the other coastline with houses along it. There you go. I've got a whole plate full of houses here. A little banding wheel there. I go one, two, three, four, five different houses. That should be enough to give me a bit of variety in the piece. And, and then, you know, you can draw anything. Trees, pine trees, apple trees. I mean, I use a variety of things. I could have a lighthouse in them, but I've already got a lighthouse cut. Um, so, um, so basically, uh, ships. I'll just I'll do, do some drawing of ships and cut the ships out. But this is how I do it. Matte board, uh, this little rubber mat thing and then multiple sheets of paper on top of each other and it's uh, you know it's relaxing to cut 